Hey, what's up? I'm not going to be on here long. Uh, I know I really don't come on live, at least Instagram live very often, but I just want to say this, man. I'm out here running. Obviously, we know what's going on in the world. Uh, it's running with my, you know, uh, young man gunned down while jogging. And I'm just going to speak facts. I know this might, like, make some people uncomfortable or might offend some people, but I don't care because the truth is the truth. What's right is what's right. And that's the problem. Like, we so wrapped up in our own world. We convince ourselves that wrong is right. We so worried about political sides and so worried about all these dumb things. We will literally ignore what's wrong just to prove ourselves right, even when we know it's wrong. And that's what I don't understand. And I know a lot of people are going to post pictures and do all these things, which are great. But it's like, especially if you're on the other side of the fence of this, um, what are you going to do? to educate people of your color about this. Let's be real. Like I'm a black man. And though I've been an athlete, it's made it easier for me. Like I grew up in a racist community where I was the only black kid in that community. So I know how I felt to be like prejudged. I know how I felt to be looked at a certain type of way. I know how I fair, felt to be treated unfairly where I wouldn't make a team when I was the best out there. And so my dad like literally had to fight for that. And as I became a better athlete, you get treated a little bit differently because you're providing something that benefits the world, right? I remember also when I was going to the NFL, I just talked about this on Facebook, and I'm just trying to set the set the stage for you guys to let you know it's real. And I get it. There's a lot of beautiful people. We shouldn't see color. I understand all of that stuff. Like, if you listen to my videos, listen to Divided States of America, listen to my video, Colorblind, one of my first spoken words. Like, I believe that we should judge people by their character, not by their color. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen like that. Unfortunately, I fit the description. That's just facts. You know how many times, like, I got pulled over before, and I'm not just talking about police officers, because I have a lot of police friends, but I got judged before, even with speaking. Let's be real, I'm in an industry where you don't see a lot of people like me. You don't. You don't see a lot of people, definitely don't look like this. If they're my color, they're definitely clean cut. I really don't see me. And... I've told people, like, I'm not with the bring me on stage just because you want a black guy. I'm not. Bring me on stage because I'm a beast. Period. Because when it comes, and I'm just making the world respect my greatness, when it comes to speaking and impacting people, I want the best in the world to do it. And I don't never state stuff like that, but it's just facts. Period. And I've been doing this for the last decade. But even in my industry, I would get told, hey, you're not professional enough. You should cut your hair. You should change the way you talk. So you you can kind of just fit in. You can kind of just fit in. You won't really, you know, you won't be the, the edgy person. And I said, I'm not doing that because I'm going to tell you something. I made a mistake when I went to the NFL. Right before I left to go to Indianapolis, I got a call from somebody I really respected, one of my family members. And they said, hey, Trent, because they've been in the NFL. They're actually co they coach. He said, Trent, cut your hair. And I was like, why? He's like, cut your hair and I had dreads. I was like, I'm not cutting my hair. He's like, if you want a fair shake in this in, in NFL, like, I don't want anything to be like, oh, he has dreadlocks. I got to choose between a clean cut person versus the person that looks like they've been through some stuff, even though I never did anything wrong in my, well, I'm not saying wrong. I never got into trouble like that in my life. He said, you already have tattoo sleeves. He was like, just cut your hair. And I was like, nah. He's like, Trent, cut your hair. So anyways, I cut my hair and I regretted that to that day because I knew who my character was. And I still got cut at the end of the day anyway. And I'm not saying, you know, the NFL was racist or anything like that. But it's just sad. My point I'm making is that it's sad that you got to have those conversations because of that. You know, I know growing up, I had conversations with my dad very often. He had to give us a set of rules and guidelines when we left the house. If you got pulled over, don't do this, don't do that. There's going to be times you walk around the store and people are going to prejudge you. Even to this day, it still happens to me. Let me walk into a certain store. Even to this day. And so it's sad that we live in a world like that when I don't even know if it could ever be fair when you look at someone and you automatically judge them based upon the cover of their life. You don't take time to read the book. You judge them based upon the color, the cover, which is their color, of their life. And so I would be lying if I said I never worried, I never worry about, I'm jogging right now. If I, I, I think about that often. Like I think about, man, what if somebody don't like me and pull up on me? Or what if I just fit the description? 
when I ain't doing nothing wrong. And I think about that like a lot when I leave my house. So I just want to take, come on here and just bring, just please understand how we change the world. We understand people for one. And that takes time for conversation. You understand why a person like they are. You understand, try to understand what it's like to, to be in their shoes. Then you love that person. And then you respect that person. I've been able to travel all across the world, different uh, cultures, religions, races. And those are the three universal truths. So if you just post a picture or you use whatever, you never have a conversation with the people you need to have a conversation with. And I'll tell you right now, if everybody in your life is your same color as you, then you're small minded. If everybody in your life is the same class as you, meaning that, you know, you only hang around rich people because you're rich, you small minded. If you never speak on certain things, I'm not talking about online because a lot of people do it for clout. I'm talking about to your kids. I'm talking about to your community. I tell kids all the time, listen, I'm a public speaker, man. They want to put you in a box of just being a rapper or just being, you know, a athlete. That's all they want to put you in the box in. I want to tell you, your life is bigger than that. You can be a published author. You can speak on big stages across the world and be who you are. We need more people like that. And we need more people promoting that and allowing that and not for no sympathy points. But you're looking at a person based upon their character. And you don't let anything else influence your decision. That's what we need in this world. But it's going to take you having that conversation. You bringing that light and that understanding. Because if you stay silent on unjust violence, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. That's facts. Stuff ain't fair, man, but it's life. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.